Well, here we are. We made it to the South Catamount Reservoir. I was originally planning on going to the north one, but this changed the game. When I was checking in, the lady said that up at the South Catamount Reservoir, they've been catching them, and the possession limit is limitless, um, since they're gonna drain it, apparently. So that's really exciting. If we can figure out how to catch them, man, we could stock the freezer. Um, I'm limiting my excitement because I've gone fishing a few times now and only caught a few fish. So we'll see if the unlimited possession limit really makes a difference. The goal today is to have a little catch and cook. Um, I brought the cast iron, a little gas stove so we can cook out here. I also break my rod tip. I also did bring a little pack of dinner just in case we don't get into the trout. Something tells me, you know, if you don't bring dinner, then you're gonna starve. So we're gonna have a great time out here. I kinda wanna hike back a little bit, see if I can get to where a little less people are fishing, but this lake is going to be pretty much pounded wherever you go, so we'll work our way down the bank like we did. Well, I guess we have so far this summer on the fishing trip. It's kind of a fun way to fish and hit some different cover and enjoy the stay out here. nuts. At this first spot I just decided to cast off the rock behind me a little bit. I didn't have any luck and I was just kind of looking down in the water and all of a sudden there's this at least 30 inch predator fish of some sort. I, it looked like a muskie to me but I didn't think there's any muskie in here so when we get back I'll take a look at that and see what kind of fish are around but man I've been stoked to catch him. I jigged my little bait fishing with this this silver blade bait here. I jigged it right by him. He kind of just looked at it, swam off. It is about one o'clock right now, so I'm not seeing any fish action, but I'm not really expecting to. Right now we'll keep working our way back towards the harder to access portions of this lake.
pretty cool place back here. We've got water running in. I'm guessing that snow melt off the mountain. And coming down into the reservoir here. And it's neat because with the reservoir draining down like this, you can see exactly what it's like on the bottom of this reservoir under the water and it's pretty bland you know so I'm gonna try fishing where this fresh water is coming in I think the fish are gonna like that but we'll find out I suppose bit up here. I went to a couple weights and then I switched from the blade bait to this MEP spinner. And I can still see these fish swirling out there so I'm hoping with the weights I'll be able to get out there far enough and get into them. I also switched from straight braid to the floral leader. Just trying to switch things up because Man, they're eating right now and they're not eating my lure and I hate it so hopefully they started to sprinkle here a little bit I'm guessing that's what kind of got this fish fired up over here so all of a sudden they're just grabbing stuff off the top like a, some sort of switch flip I'm thinking that's what did it so we weren't able to get anything so far and keep working on this bank and hopefully my fish catching something flips the switch. I would appreciate that. I'm starting to lose my confidence. They're definitely in here. Let's get them. Simple to get on this thing. Back to using the silver blade bait. Sounds like you got a jet coming. Pretty cool with the Air Force Base around here. Get fighter jets flying over quite often. Oh yeah, I can see it off. But back to the fishing. They've been eating, just not my lures. So, after switching through a couple different lures and doing that, we'll be asked to let this decide I'm gonna pick a bait and stick with it for a while. So, on an hour or so of just winding and grinding with this bait and see if we can find something that wants to eat.
starting to get pretty shallow up towards this end, opposite of the dam, and this doesn't seem too lively over here, so I'm going to put a little bit of distance on the shoes and hike around this far end of it. Beautiful view of Pike's Peak over there. And then come around the opposite side from what we have been fishing on. And I'm hopeful that less people are going all the way around over there. And we can get some action. Man, this is beautiful. Phew. I'll do. Walking around where this water is flowing in. It's been fun. You can easily see the elk and deer tracks in the mud. And it's been interesting to see the size difference. So let's take. Alright. So this is a good size deer track, I'd say. And let's splay it out. It's a good size. It comes up here. Nice meal deer. Then whoop bam. Look at the size of this elk track in comparison. It just puts that deer track to shame. Oh man, it's just awesome. I would kill to see an elk right now. This country right here looks like a good place for one to hang out. That'd be alright. I've been keeping an eye out for different stuff on the bottom of this lake. Is it is getting drained out here. Different stuff ought to show up and uh, found a fishing rod that has seen a better day. <laughs> kind of funny. I wonder what the story is on that. Alrighty. Get into a good fishable waters here. You can see the stream is filtering into the reservoir right there. Looks really good. We're going to try some casts here. Work our way down this bank. Let's get her done. Good stuff. I got a bite back there. Hopefully it just keeps going up from here. I did find a little floaty top water bobber thing I could explain if we need to use it but if things do get desperate around here at least hey it's actually a pretty decent spoon hey sweet found a lure it's my second one so yeah like I was saying about the top water thing is if they don't hit these spinners That'd be a good option to switch to eventually. I was kind of hoping I had one, so cool to find one. That was pretty cool. I just had a really nice looking rainbow trout follow my spinner right up to the bank. Struck at it like three times and I could see it. It just felt a little bit happy. I think we might be figuring something out here. It wasn't a big one, but any fish was good. A lot of feeding picking up across the lake. So 
it for this time too. It's safe to say that my methods are not working to catch them. I can see these fish feeding all over the place. Yeah, I've had two interested so far, but they just aren't grabbing it. So, desperate times call for desperate measures. It is 3.48. I've got about two hours max left to fish. And I did find something special along the way. Put it in this little zipper pocket. And it is not the one I already showed you. I didn't show you that gold splinter. That's cool to find. But it's this. What in the Sam is this? This is a little bobber float with a little piece of line coming off it to a very small hook. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. You can't see it then. And See, it is worn out, but we're going to take it, replace the string going down to the hook, and then we're going to find some feathers from birds along this bank here and tie that into a little fly and cast that out and see if we cannot get a little action. I'm down to try anything at this point. My spinners and Normal techniques aren't getting it done. The water's pretty still. I guess we just got a gust of wind now, but overall it's pretty still. So I think this top water could do the trick. So where's the try? Let's give it a go. I'm gonna start this revamp by cutting the existing line. Take note of what little foot okay so that's cut off we just have the bobber now and then take it off the hook and now we just have this baby little hook let's grab some monofilament line it up just like how it was but fresh. Alright, so we've got fresh line on there. Looks nice and strong. Now let's go get to work on making the fly. First things first is finding a feather which I've been seeing a bunch of these little white feathers along the way in that one. Doesn't look the best. Take this one. This one looks good. Kind of looks like a seagull feather or something like that. So we'll take this feather. Looks like a fish catcher. Trim it up a little bit and tie it to the hook like so. 
I've never done this before, so be interesting to see how it turns out. The feather is tied onto the hook. Um, I just did a couple loop de loop knots, and it seems to be on there pretty good. Now, this full feather could do the trick, but I'm guessing that they're eating bugs out there that are quite a bit smaller. I'm just going to take the scissors. it up I'm being pretty aggressive with the trimming because there are quite a few feathers around here so if I have to redo it that is okay all right so that's kind of what we are up with there Sure, we'll think differently. So there it is. Got my bobber over here. All we have left is to tie it on the rod. We're good to cast. I ended up going with straight braid to the bobber since we have this 12 inch leader to the, I guess we'll call it our fly. And then I also did put a weight on there so I can cast it a little further. Let's see how this thing looks in the water. Here is a little test. So that bobber sits in the water all right. And then the fly floats on top, for now at least. So we'll see what the fish think. I had one come up and grab something off the top just now, right out in front of me. There's a lot of feeding going on, top water stuff. So that's not a problem. I'm just slowly reeling it back. If this doesn't work, we'll try some different retrieves. Could even make that leader on there a little longer. The inaugural cast looked good. No action. Yeah. They're jumping everywhere. My confidence in this newfangled technique is definitely dwindling. I'm trying a couple different retrieves. Right now, I'm just letting it float on its own. Getting a little rippled by the waves. Actually, this one looks pretty good in the water. Well, I'm glad we tried this newfangled technique, but uh, it's gonna be all she wrote. Haven't had any action on it. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Seems like there might be a little bit of a storm brewing. And it just doesn't seem like the deal, so probably go back. So. No freaking way. I'm not kidding you. I got a drone. 
It's like a nice rainbow trout. I got grip on it. I'm on this really steep incline. I'll do a longer interview later. Let's get this thing in the bay. Yes. Let's run through what just happened. So, I'd been working down from that side, coming down this bank, and I got to this, I guess, rock edge here. So, these rocks are coming down into the water super steep. As you can see, my feet are getting wet because the slope is angled so much that I keep sliding into the water and that's a little different than what I had been dealing with all the way up to here and I kept just tossing my spoon just like I had been and whoop bam right out there about halfway returning my cast one just smoked my spoon which I am using this Thomas Cyclone gold spoon with an it added weight to get it help cast a little easier but he'd smoke that and I swung him up on the bank and chaos ensued with the steep bank I figured he'd come off pretty quick and flop back and luckily I was able to get a hand on him before he flopped back in the water and he's in the bag he's dinner yes. so, oh man that feels so good it's like five o'clock so I've been out here for a long time and it's just been tough feels so good to have it happen let's see if we can't do it again Five fifteen, and got this nice trout here and I brought stuff to cook it up so that's the plan um, we're just gonna clean it up quick and then go head up into this valley a little bit behind me and have a nice little cookout so to clean it up I'm actually gonna do it right by the lake it's nice to leave the guts and the leftovers right at the lake so I'm going to cut it right behind the head like this. Alright. Then I'm going to insert my knife right where this poop comes out. And follow that up through the belly and into the chin and I'll connect those two cuts okay and then I'll remove these two fins here Okay. Hmm. You got quite a stomach there. Check that out. Never seen anything like that. Looks natural. Alright. So, then I'll remove all the guts. Just with my fingers here, I can do it pretty easily. Follow that right up to its head where we cut it. 
and boom, the waste pop right off. Got a little bit of stuff to clean out of here. Blood and stuff. And I've got the nice boy. Right up in this valley seems like a excellent place to have a little cookout. So that's where we're gonna set up camp. Feeling a little extra thankful that I have the dang bear spray on me right now because we're gonna be cooking and getting greasy out here. Our flame is lit and the cast iron is heating up. What the plan is here is got a little packed in. It. So in here I've got just potatoes and spinach, different seasonings. And then here I've got hamburger. So my plan is to toss a hamburger in the cast iron and then eat that with the potatoes. Then, while I'm eating that, I'll put the fish on it, and the fish can then cook in the hamburger and potato seasonings and stuff, and it'll pick that up and be an easy way to have well-seasoned fish out here. So, I did bring a little extra oil, if need be, that's all olive oil. Got my bear spray set out in case I need that quickly. Pretty sweet setup here. I got some aspen trees in this valley, and then right down there is the reservoir where we caught the fish. I love this. This is really fun to do. I would like to do it more often. I'm glad I can do it now. Dinner is coming together pretty good. It's going to be hard to get these potatoes to warm up all the way through, but they're already cooked and soft, so that won't be a problem. I think we might yank it off pretty quick here and get the fish going. Looks good. One potato overboard. Alright, we'll turn the heat down a little bit. And actually, I need to add a little bit of oil. Didn't really get as much grease on there as I thought I would. The meat and potato soaked it up pretty good. I'll wash this off best I could. Got absolutely covered in rocks, so I'm sure I'll find a few of those when I'm eating it. It looks pretty good. Fits in the pan good. I like it. chow down my main meal while I wait for my dessert to cook.
I've just about polished off my main course. And it looks like this trout is almost done. It's been cooking up really nice, actually. You can see it's getting crispy on the outside. Um, I wish I had spent a little more time trying to get that pan even so all the oil won't go to one side. But it still seems to be getting it done. We're going to take the fork and see if this meat is flaky yet. And that will tell us if it's done or not. Still seems a bit mushy. Not flaky like you'd see it. Like to see it, so I'll crank up the heat a little bit and we'll give it some more time. I'm kind of itching to eat this and uh, it looks really good. Not quite done yet, but I think this tail is a little bit thinner back here. Probably done. I'll try a little bit of it. Okay. Could use a little bit more time, I think. Try a little bigger piece here, see if we can get it off the bone. Oh yeah. Maybe that meat just peel right off the bone. That is nice. Sweet. That tail was really good, but it was still a little bit mushy. This, I think I jumped the gun on it a little bit. So I'm just gonna let this fish cook for a little while and make sure it's cooked through. I'm just gonna pull this thing. Uh, probably jumping the gun a little bit, but I can't wait any longer. I'm just getting too antsy, so. I know one side is done for sure, and then the other one I haven't checked, but it's gotta be all right. And if not, I guess we're gonna get a little sick. Let's set that over there to cool. Turn off our handy dandy stove. I really like that thing, it cooks well. For Using a frying pan like that, actually. It's a pretty even surface and solid. We'll disconnect our gas, give that fish a little bit of time to settle, and dig in. I can't wait. This is a moment I've been anticipating for some time now. My first Colorado trout, actually. I haven't ate any yet. I've either put them back or Bye. 
I really, really wish I could explain better just how good this fish is. It's, it's so good. I mean, I've had good deep fried fish before, but this is just so simple to make. It, we didn't have to do anything to the fish, and it is just delicious. I think a pretty good example of how good it is is what's left here. A couple bones. Just cleaned it up, so that was delicious. Highly encourage you to come out and try this. Just catch a fish, bring cast iron, and fire it up right out by the lake. The fish tastes so much better. and It's just an awesome experience. We're going to get packed up here. I can see some fish feeding down there. Maybe we can sneak a little bit of fishing in before we head out. But that's going to about do it for this trip. Man, what a day.